Hey guys, it's Carl. So I've reduced my tech travel pack once again into a smaller form factor. I think you guys know that I travel all the time and I'm just about to head on another journey. 20,000 miles in around two weeks, listen to this flight path. So Toronto, Taipei, Paris, Istanbul, back to Toronto um, in just under, what is that, 12, uh, 13 days. I'll keep you guys posted. But I always try to compact all of my tech. So uh, this is kind of the new go-to. I've managed to keep it in one small carry-on. This actually fits in the front of any plane seat and I don't need uh, any large packs. All of my tech is kind of in here. So check this out. So this is a little travel pack from a DB Journey. I've checked out their backpacks. They've got some dope ones in orange, but this is the ultimate uh, tech travel thing. Look how much tech or look how many goodies I can actually manage to squeeze in here. I'm gonna just unpile this all on the table. I've got a couple zippers here. Some extra stuff will come out. All this stuff fits inside of here. And before we get into those items, some of which aren't uh, tech related also, Talking about travel gear. So I'm wearing one of these right now. So this is uh, Unbound Marina. So shout out to them for sponsoring this episode. I've actually traveled with these tees quite a bit. They produce a ton of stuff all made out of uh, merino wool. I am always kind of on the hunt for a minimal black or unbranded t-shirt. So a lot of the work I do uh, requires me to wear uh, no logos, no branding. So just trying to find a plain t-shirt, typically black is the way that uh, I try to go for my t-shirts. I kind of have the three rules. So first, the fit check. Does it fit properly? It can't be too big, it can't be too bulky. It can't be skin tight either. I kind of still like to have it uh, quite athletic, show off uh, some of the guns. Second, it has to be able to travel well so I can roll these up, throw them into my suitcase or in my case, typically just my carry-on. The third being wearability. So typically on that two week trip, I'll probably wear this t-shirt four or five days uh, just because I have no space uh, in my small carry-on. Most of it is just filled with tech. And the great thing about Merino wool, it's antibacterial. So I can get multiple wears out of it. Even if I am sweating, hauling around camera gear, shooting content all day, I can still wear it uh, for a second, for a third, for a fourth day, still keeping it fairly fresh. The material and each actual individual strand of the fiber can hold a third of its own body weight uh, in water, so it just helps wick sweat away. I typically just take these off every day and can air dry them in whichever hotel room that I'm at. So these are really made for travelers. They pack really well, they don't wrinkle that much, and I actually just got a brand new pack of these and unboxed them right here before this video. So I got a couple new polos, a couple pairs of pants, and these t-shirts, which I kind of swear by now when I travel. So I've got a bunch here in different colors. I've got one in navy, I've got some in white. Um, they're just kind of go-to staples uh, for my travel game. Switching back to the tech, so this is actually the first time I've done this, uh, mostly because of the new update uh, for iPad Pros or the M1 slash M2 iPads. We now have Final Cut Pro available on these devices and since this fits in this pack, like literally perfectly, it fits like a glove. So this is the 12.9 inch M2 iPad Pro. You can see how it fits literally edge to edge here. There's even a slot in this pack for the Apple Pencil, obviously second gen. And now with that big update for M1 slash M2 iPads, you can get Final Cut Pro and you can finally edit uh, footage on your actual iPad. So some caveats about that. Unfortunately, you can't transfer footage from say your iPad to a working file on your Mac, your MacBook Pro, my iMac behind me. Third party plugins are still being developed. So I usually use these callouts for uh, things like uh, pricing. They're through Motion VFX. I'm sure those will be available a bit later on. I'm currently shooting in uh, S-Log3. I usually put some sort of LUT over so that really can't be used just yet. But I do think this is super powerful for shooting footage, say, off of your iPhone. A lot of the social clips that we do are just shot on iPhone, edited quickly on my computer. I can now do that fully on my iPad Pro with pretty much ease. You can scroll through the timeline, add effects, the ones that are built in with the Apple Pencil, but just remember, all the footage that you shoot has to be embedded or has to be on your iPad. You can't work off of an external drive, so just be sure to pick an iPad with a large enough space. So I think I have the largest size option here. I know it's not cheap, but I now really think there's a good use for the M2 iPad Pros before I thought they were a bit overkill. Now with Final Cut, um, it can fully utilize the power of that M2 silicon. So I think that's super dope. And this will be the only device I'll be traveling with. Uh, wish me luck. I'll 
keep you guys updated how it goes. Second off, I'd probably argue these are the most important things to travel with. So I'll give you kind of a few little hacks. So of course, passport um, and wallet, you can't get on a plane uh, without them. So I just have this uh, little passport holder. Uh, I typically don't do designer, but uh, for some of my leather goods, I uh, hook up with LV. So the Canadian passport, I think a lot of you know uh, Canadian. They are actually redesigning this. Mine expires in 2025. So Canada spent, I think, the past 10 years redeveloping it, uh, a new color scheme. There's a few new uh, security features. Just kind of never forget your passport. That should always be on your top priority list. And my wallet, that's just where I keep my credit cards. So a little hack uh, with traveling since I am uh, based in Canada, get on a frequent flyer program. So if you do travel quite a bit, for example, I try to fly exclusively Air Canada or within the Star Alliance. I also hook up my credit card to my aeroplan, which is kind of the um, Air Canada specific point system. So I can always double dip. So if I'm earning points when I fly, I also earn points uh, when I spend money on my business credit card. So that's kind of just something to keep in mind. You'll actually fly a lot for free. You can make free upgrades and it's just such an easy point system to get into. If you are traveling, you might as well double dip and get extra benefits like lounge access, free bag check, priority, all those little perks that make the travel experience just a tad bit better it is a slog to travel like my next flight 14 15 hours to Taipei it's a long one I just want to make it as comfy as I can next on the list so a pair of headphones I think a pair of noise canceling headphones are an absolute must so the ones that I always recommend I know that they're on the price end I know that Apple is definitely releasing a new pair these are the airpod maxes these things are the comfiest headphones to wear and i find that they have some of the best uh, active noise canceling i think it's because of the special memory foam in their ear cups and what's dope you can actually just replace these or get replacements if they do get worn in i know that you're probably eyeing the color they don't officially sell them in orange i got these custom painted by a uh, color wear they're super dope they're kind of one of one no one else has a uh, bright orange headphones i think they look dope and like i said for 15 hours, I get no ear fatigue. My typical go-to, I'll stick a uh, podcast on or an audiobook uh, like Harry Potter. I'll pass out on a plane. It's like my gift ability or my superhero skill to sleep on any sort of surface. It's the reason why I'm able to travel and do what I do because I can sleep when I fly. And the big reason is I just drown out everything, all the crying babies, all of the people complaining with these headphones. Switching to uh, smartphone devices, like I said, I shoot most of my social media stuff uh, with my actual smartphones, not so much with my cameras these days. So iPhone 14 Pro, just being in that Apple ecosystem, it still takes the best video for any uh, smartphone out right now. And with AirDrop, I can just quickly shunt that over to my iPad Pro edit those uh, pieces of footage, like I said, in Final Cut now. And for my Android device, the Pixel 7a just came out. So this is their new uh, colorway in Coral. It's a Google Store exclusive. I just have a little dbrand skin over top to protect it. I think it's some awesome value, 499 bucks. So as a secondary device, something I'm just not as uh, scared for losing. It takes some solid photos. I'd even argue that uh, Google's computational photography is better than iPhone. You got some great editing software in here with the magic eraser with that feature unblur. If you don't nail the focus completely, you can just sharpen that in post and it just does that all computationally with that G2 tensor chip. It's just uh, such a powerhouse for 500 bucks. It's a pretty solid option. And I think uh, if you're rocking two of these, you can't go wrong with either. So charging wise, because we're keeping it pretty minimal, I can for the first time uh, travel with one power brick. So this is just a little USB-C power brick from uh, Belkin. It's got two different ports. One has a 18 watt charger. That's typically for my iPhone. The other one has a max charge of 50 to 60 watts. That's for the iPad Pro. It's nice and easy to use. It's got this uh, nice retractable little port. If you need to travel to a different area, you just need a little adapter. And for the cables, I just have my my coveted orange braided cable. I actually got this uh, from my orange iMac and then just a standard USB-C cable. So it's nice to travel with just one charger. Typically, if I have a laptop, I need a 96 watt charger, which is just bigger, bulkier, obviously heavier. And I can actually juice up all devices with this portable 
power bank. So this, once again, is from Belkin as well. So this guy has uh, 10,000 milliamps of juice. I've had it for quite a while now, and why I love it so much, the cables are actually built into the actual unit. So I can actually leave this in my hotel room or in my pack somewhere, and I can just kind of go around with this and juice up the devices kind of on the go. And I can actually charge two devices at once. It's just a handy little piece of uh, travel gear if you're on your devices all the time. Just handy to have to keep them juiced. So storage-wise, even though I am not bringing a camera this time. I'm shooting it all on my smartphones or even my iPad Pro. It does look weird to hold that as a camera. I can still back up all of my footage on an external hard drive so I can send that, uh, say, back to Nick who's at home uh, when he's editing. And before I forget, this one is from Lexar. It's also a terabyte and it's actually a gaming SSD. It's got super quick speeds. It handles pretty much everything that we shoot here. Lastly, some other little accessories, just mostly for shooting content. These are nice and kind of budget friendly. So Manfrotto Mini Tri iPod needs no introduction. It's around 25 bucks. It can hold uh, pretty much anything with a quarter inch connector. So I've just got a little $15 phone mount. If I am vlogging, if I am uh, recording any content, I just kind of have this up on a table. I can actually articulate the head and a little aperture light to give me extra lighting. So depending on where I am, I know that I do a lot of uh, trade shows. Trade show lighting is, for whatever reason, the absolute worst. Just having this small little handy light, which you can change the color temperature, you can change the percentage or how powerful the light is. Just planting this somewhere, giving myself good lighting so I look half decent on camera. Just a handy little combo to have. Around 125 bucks for all of this and minus your device. And last but not least, I mentioned that it's all just not tech stuff. So I do typically wear uh, shades all the time. When I travel, um, it's mostly just because I get so tired, I can kind of hide my eyes. I know a lot of you ask about the shades that I typically rock. So these are just a pair of uh, Persols. Why I really like them, they're actually in this nice uh, green tortoise pattern. It's not the usual uh, typical brown, so I thought they were pretty dope. And uh, something that can cost a buck that I always bring, just chapstick, because uh, traveling, being on a plane dries out your skin. I like to keep uh, my chaps, my lips not chapped, or my lips chapped. No, not, you don't want them chapped. You want them unchapped? My lips unchapped? Lips. Unchapped. Unchapped. Chapstick. Nivea sponsor me. But anyways, that was my super mobile tech travel pack, something that is a lot smaller than what I typically travel in. I know that I'm always uh, trying to reduce my footprint size in what I bring. I think this is the smallest I've ever gone, but uh, for someone that travels quite a bit, those are some pretty uh, useful tips and tricks. Of course, everything is kind of linked down below. I forgot to mention, I have been wearing my Apple Watch Ultra a lot more. You can see it here on my wrist. This needs no introduction. It's a bit more rugged. It survives those extra long flights because it has better battery. And uh, this little orange strap, because I'm addicted to orange, is from Nomad. I know that this was limited edition. I know a lot of you have asked me about it, but um, that's kind of my watch combo, which can also technically fit um, in this pack as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Hope you found some useful uh, tips and travel tricks. I'll catch the rest of you um, probably when I'm back from my travels. Peace.